Hey class, I wanted to talk about number 64 on the homework as well to kind of talk through what's going on and help us think about some of the um, topics, concepts, and ideas that are at play here because this is a really different type of problem. We have this block of wood that's being pushed either up or down a wall. So you're pushing at an angle and that force is going to allow the block to either move up the wall at a constant velocity or down the wall at a constant velocity. So constant velocity, first of all, should clue us in. Oh yeah, we got equilibrium. So that means some of the forces and in the x direction will equal zero and some of the forces in the y direction will equal a zero. Okay, bonus. Now what is even going on? So there's a force at an angle, so it's gonna have an x component into the wall, sort of, and a y component up the wall, and there's kinetic friction. So the y component must be overcoming kinetic friction if you're moving up, but also overcoming the weight because the weight's going to want to go down, right? Oh boy, howdy. But then when you're moving down the wall, now friction's going to be up. Oh man, so this is confusing. This is why we need to make sure we draw things out. And another question might be is like, well, how is friction happening? There's not a surface that it's flat against on the bottom to generate a normal force. Well, here the wall is gonna be the thing generating the normal force. Oh boy, howdy. Okay, so let's work through it, kind of going through the process. So as we read the question, we should be able to list a few things that we're given, things that we're given or things that we know, right? So we're given that the coefficient of kinetic friction is equal to 0 0.310. 0. We're given that the block has a weight equal to 40.0 newtons and we're told that the angle theta that that P force makes is 33.0 degrees. So now what I want to do is I want to make free body diagrams, but we're going to actually have to make two different free body diagrams here. Oh, sorry. So we're going to make a free body diagram for part A where we're moving up the wall. And then we're going to also make a free body diagram for part B where we're moving down the wall since the direction of motion is going to change the direction of friction because friction always opposes motion, all right? So let's go ahead and try this out. So if we start with part A, when we're moving up the wall, all right, we always have weight going down. That helps. Easy. Weight. I'll do that for both of them. Okay. Now when we're going up the wall, the force of kinetic friction is going to be down, opposing the direction of motion. When we're going down the wall, though, the force of kinetic friction is going to be up, opposing the direction of motion. Additionally, we have the p-force that's at that angle theta. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the p-force sort of at an angle like this. It draws it coming in from the side like this. I don't like that because I always like to do it like in vector mode where the tail starts at your object. So we draw it kind of like that there. Okay, and we need to now label the angle, and this is where it can get a little bit tricky. But if this angle here is theta, what that means then is this angle up here is also theta, and this one here is 90 minus theta. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to label this here as our angle theta that we're given. And then I'm going to come over and do the same thing in this other picture here. There's my p-force, and this here is the angle theta. My free body diagram is getting a little bit crowded, so let me just clean this up a little here for you all. So again, this is theta, and then this vertical force is our kinetic force of friction. But there's one more thing we're missing, right? Right now, it's not in equilibrium. There's a p-force that has an x component, and there's nothing opposing it. What's preventing the block from moving to the right? Well, the wall. And so the wall is going to generate a normal force perpendicular to the surface of contact. Normal forces are always perpendicular to the surface of contact. So we're going to have a normal force coming off of the wall like this. So now that's a proper free body diagram. Boy, howdy, huh? The only thing we're missing is labeling our axes. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and call x horizontal and y vertical for these two situations so that we can go ahead and try to solve. 
Now this part's a little annoying because in the picture they label it as P and in the problem statement they ask you to find F, but it's really, they're saying the force, call it F, label it as P, whichever you want to call it, a push or a force, but it's this that you're trying to find. What is the magnitude of this force being applied to the block? So I'm calling it P in my free body diagram based on the picture, but just know that that's the same as the force that they're asking you for in the problem statement. Okay, so how do we find that? There's all this other crazy stuff going on. It's going to be based on the weight, it's going to be based on kinetic friction, and we know friction is based on the normal, so, oh man, it gets complicated real quick, right? Well, that's where we need to write out the sum of the forces. So, let's start and look at situation A. So, in situation A, what we can do is look at some of the forces in the X and some of the forces in the Y. Maybe before we do that, though, we should take and break P into its X and Y components. So if we look, PX is going to be the horizontal component of vector P. So again, you can make a little triangle out of vector P like this, right? And so the X component is going to be the opposite side of that triangle. So it's going to be P times the sine of theta for the X component, and it's going to be P times the cosine of theta for the Y component. So now we can go and write out some of the forces. In the x direction, we're going to have px, which is p sine theta, minus the normal force equals zero. And that's all that's in the x direction. So we can look, check it out. Normal force is just going to equal p times the sine of theta. Then we go to do some of the forces in the y direction. Maybe I'll switch to a different color so we can kind of distinguish between x and y. I'll make this black for the y. So now in the y direction here, what do we have? Well, we have PY, so that's P cosine theta. And for part A, both weight and kinetic friction are down. That will change for part B. But for now, we have minus weight and minus the force of kinetic friction equals zero. Okay, cool. So now we know force of kinetic friction is coefficient times the normal. So let's make that substitution. P cosine theta. Again, this is what we want, but we need to know these things before we can solve, right? Minus the weight minus the coefficient times the normal force equals zero. Now I can substitute this in for the normal force. So P cosine theta minus W minus the coefficient times P sine theta equals zero. And now we have an equation where the only things in it are either our knowns, theta, W, and mu, or P, the thing we're trying to find. So from here it just becomes algebra. You see that P cosine theta minus the coefficient times P sine theta equals W. I just added W to the other side. And from there, you should be able to factor out the P, divide, and solve. When you get to part B, I'm not going to write it all out for you because I want you to get the practice, but check it out. The only thing that changes from part A here to part B is that now the coefficient of friction is in the opposite direction. It's now up the wall, making it easier for you. So it'll actually require less force to move it down the wall than it does up the wall because now friction is assisting you. So the only thing that's going to change is that this minus sign here is going to become a plus sign because it's helping you. So it becomes very easy to do part B once you finish part A. So I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions and have a box-worthy day.